Call the City Council meeting to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Coles? Here. Alderman Subak? Alderman Knight? Here. Alderman Pisek? Here. Alderman Shockey? Here. Alderman Winger? Here. Alderman Wesley? Here. Alderman Ptolemy? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Quorum being present, would you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a motion to approve the minutes of September 7th, 2006. So moved. Is there a second? second, second. Any comments, corrections, additions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Bills, Alderman Winger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do understand that there are going to be some questions on the list of bills, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the motion and look for the second, and then we'll uh, call the question and have the discussion then. So I make a motion to approve the list of bills dated September 21st, 2006 for $839,787.14. Is there a second? Second. On the question. On the question. Alderman Knight? Um, page three, under uh, Daniel Shockey, IML conference per diem, $128. Page four, Eugene Wesley, IML conference per diem, $256. <clears throat> Excuse me. Page five, Kenneth Johnson, IML conference per diem, $256. Page six, Joseph Coles, IML conference per diem, $256. Page seven, Jeff Birmis, IML conference per diem, $256. Page 12, Shirley Siebert, IML conference per diem, $256. And page 14, Christine Winger, IML conference per diem, $256. <clears throat> Each one of these were presented under account number 01419-99, which is miscellaneous, and it was in our 206-207 um, budget. Um, under miscellaneous, there was nothing ever uh, approved for any of that conference. There were notary fees, miscellaneous engraving, flowers, and miscellaneous charges for $1,340. The item should have been under 014119.05, which identifies as a line item the IML conference for $1,500. When you total up the alder and the elected officials who are going to this, it's $1,664, which is over budget. Uh, I believe we need a um, amendment for the budget for this, and I don't see paying this. We perhaps in the past, when the aldermen were being paid $2,400, that wasn't a bad thing, but now that they're getting $7,200, the mayor's getting $10,000. The clerk's getting around $7,600. I don't feel that's money well spent, and I'm not going to approve that in the budget. Mr. Williams? I will check with the finance director, <clears throat> the director on the account number, but under miscellaneous, uh, we did that based on the per diem, and um, she advised that that was the appropriate account. Well, that only comes up to $1,340. And we're spending 1664 So if my math is correct, that's a discrepancy. We, we still have enough uh, funds under conferences for the IML. I believe this is also money that could be better spent with our after-school program or to possibly help the, uh, the one special need on the um, PACE program, PACE bus. Um, I don't see where, I know it was approved in the budget, but I think this money could be well spent elsewhere. Uh, just one point of correction. Uh, those of us that didn't run a year and a half ago are still under the old salaries. Uh, I think it's 22 or 2400 for the, uh, the alderman. One person. And the, and the clerk and I are both under the old salary as well. But you're still making 10000 uh, I don't believe so. Or I'd be glad to. If uh, I can get the additional money, I'd appreciate it, but I don't think that's correct. Anything else on the question? 
Uh, roll call. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Knipe? No. Alderman Pysak? No. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Wesley? Yes. Alderman Talamay? No. Was that 4-3? Uh, that passes. Okay. Uh, any citizens wish to address the City Council this evening? If so, if you go to the podium and give us your name and address, please. Uh, hearing none, I do have a few written communiques. Uh, volunteers are needed for fall chore days on weekends, November 4th through November 19th. Uh, many seniors in our communities uh, and community of Wooddale need assistance uh, with outdoor chores. Uh, during chore days, volunteers of all ages team up to help their elderly neighbors, uh, neighbors uh, prepare their homes <laughs> Sorry for the coming season. Uh, we need volunteers throughout DuPage County, uh, adults, teens, families, churches, schools, businesses, civic clubs, social clubs, all will be uh, appreciated. If you're interested in volunteering, uh, you should call 620-0804. And the opposite to that is seniors of the city of Wooddale. Uh, chore days is coming again November 4th through 19th. Uh, volunteers from the community will do light yard work for qualified seniors. Uh, they'll rake lays, bundle branches, trim bushes, and do general yard cleanup. Uh, to qualify, you have to live in the community as Wooddale, uh, be a homeowner, and are on limited income, and a um, senior citizen unable to do yard work yourself and don't have anyone else to help you. Uh, if you're looking to have a volunteer come to your house during any either of those two weekends, uh, please call 620 0804, that's the DuPage Senior Citizens Council, 620-0804. Uh, Kiwanis uh, Day is coming, uh, which is going to be the Peanut Day fundraiser, Friday, September 22nd, and uh, that is approved. They're also looking for corporate donations to buy boxes of peanuts, uh, which then they'll be using for their fundraising on the uh, street. Anyone interested can contact the Kiwanis of Wooddale, P.O. Box 524, Bensonville, Illinois. Uh, next is a letter from Wooddale Community Church. Uh, dear friends, on behalf of the Wooddale Community Church Food Pantry and those it serves, we thank you for your generous donation of food for our pantry. Uh, the food pantry continues to serve needy Wooddale residents and your contributions will help continue that ministry in our community. Uh, we have served 10 to 12 families each month this past year. At this time of the year, we have been in particular need of donations as our supply was down, uh, so your donation is timely. We appreciate all the work and time uh, that went into planning, washing cars, packing and delivering food. Uh, we send our thanks to all of those who donated these items. Uh, gratefully, Daniel Foss, pastor, of the Wooddale Community Church. Alderman Wesley? You might want to bring up the, um, uh, the town hall meeting too tonight. That, that was passed out in the mail for that could be out on cable channel. I remind everybody they're invited to the Wooddale Junior High uh, for the meeting of all the governments of Wooddale. Uh, for the presentations as to what's happening with our communities and all the citizens can ask their uh, questions. And that is going to be on October 3rd from 7 to 9 p.m. at Wooddale Junior High. Everyone is invited. Uh, sponsored by Itasca Bank and Trust. Under uh, Mayor's report, uh, Deputy Chief Vesta. Good evening. Uh, we're here tonight to recognize four of our officers uh, who are going to be recognized by the Alliance Against Intoxicated Motorists for their dedication to furthering the mission of our police department. Uh, one of the parts of the mission of our department is traffic enforcement and more specifically DUI enforcement. Uh, these four officers, one officer couldn't be here tonight because he's on his honeymoon. Uh, they have recognized the importance of DUI enforcement and have taken it upon themselves to make this a priority in their daily patrol. Uh, one of the things that we'll never know is how many lives have been saved because they've made these arrests. Uh, it, real quick, just a couple facts. In Illinois in 2004, which is the last year that I had data available for, there was 604 fatalities uh, 
out of 1,356 total that were alcohol related. Um, and the average blood alcohol level of a DUI offender is 0.16, which is twice the legal limit. So uh, some very serious, uh, serious action going on. Uh, I also did some looking at the stats for 2005, which is what these awards are based on. And out of 303 reporting agencies in the state, I looked at the agencies that were the same size as Wooddale, so 30 to 40 officers. And out of the entire state, Wooddale was fifth in DUI arrests per officer on average. So it's certainly a testament to the work that, that the officers are doing. Um, Charlene Woolley is joining us tonight from the Alliance Against Intoxicated Motorists. Uh, she's going to talk a little bit about, a, about her story. But as you may know, her son was killed in Wooddale six years ago by a drunk driver at, at Wooddale and Thorndale. Um, also tonight, uh, we're going to be uh, receiving an award for the largest increase percentage increase in DUI arrests as a department as a whole for 2005 over 2004. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Charlene Woolley. Um, my name is Charlene Woolley, but I go by Charlie. And um, my stepson, Eric, was actually killed uh, at Wooddale and Thorndale on June 16th, 2000. Um, I don't know if many of you remember it, but um, his father happened to be at the intersection that day uh, when Eric was making uh, the left-hand turn to go to work for his father. Um, I got involved with AIM not long after that. Um, AIM was there for us every month for almost four years going to court. Uh, someone would be there to help us through um, all the legal terminology, to explain what was going on, to be a victim's advocate. Um, I've been volunteering since then, and I just recently um, acquired the position and will be starting on October 1st of this year as a part-time victim's advocate. Um, I will be mostly doing McHenry County and Kane County, but I will be filling in for cases and helping families, um, trying to pay back, in Eric's memory, a little bit of what everyone did for us. Um, Wooddale, every time they ask me to come here, um, I don't have a problem with it. Um, the police chief and the officers and the task force um, that Friday were, um, went above and beyond. Um, they did everything right. They were there for us. They helped us through everything. They explained everything to us. And um, I have a soft spot in my heart for Wooddale, so um, I can't thank them enough or the state's attorney's office, uh, Joe Burkett and DuPage County for what they've done for us. Um, we are a local group in Illinois only, and we do um, help victims and their families. Um, if they can't pay their rent, they can't pay their utility bills, um, they will uh, give us those expenses, and the board will then decide how much they uh, can give them, depending on our fundraisers. Um, we do have a fundraiser coming up in the month of October, and I'm going to leave some invitations if anyone is interested. Uh, you're more than welcome to join. There's a silent auction, and it's a lot of fun. But right now, what I'd like to do is first um, talk about the officers that we have uh, locally here. The number of persons arrested, including zero tolerance for DUI in 2005 in Wooddale was 162. The number of sworn officers, including the chief in 2005, uh, was 33. And as I call your names, uh, if you would please come up here, we have an award we'd like to give you. First, we want to uh, recognize Officer Michael Campbell with 39 DUI arrests. And Officer Christopher Zito is having much more fun right now, so he's on his honeymoon. Um, he had 33 DUI arrests, and uh, we'll make sure that he gets his award when he comes back. We then have Officer Matthew Nelson with 17 DUI arrests. And I hope I don't badger your name too much here, but Officer John Pohl with 16 DUI arrests. Now, um, Okay, this is the Law Enforcement Award for 2005. 
This award has been developed to recognize local police departments and officers who continue to make the removal of impaired drivers from DuPage County highways a priority. The Pride Award stands for Prevention, Reflected, and Dedicated Enforcement. The Pride Award is given to the police department, which has achieved the highest percentile increase in number of DUI arrests in a one-year period. This year's winner is the Wooddale Police Department, which has achieved a 38.5 increase in DUI arrests from 2004 to 2005. The total number of arrests increased from 117 in 2004 to 162 in 2005. And I'll be presenting this to uh, Greg Vesta on behalf of the Wooddale Police Department and congratulations. Thank you. Once again, thanks to the officers that are standing before me and to the other officers in the police department for making this a priority. Uh, and also to AIM, not only do they support law enforcement's efforts, but they work with, in the legislative side and also the public, public education side. So, thank you. Uh, Deputy Chief, before you leave. Yes. Alderman Townley. I, have, I just have a quick question for you. Yeah. I mean, I understand that the, you know, that the, there was an increase of 38%. But it kind of worries me in a way too. Does that mean that there's more people out there, again, driving drunk? Then you know, I mean, for a year, for a while there, it was going. It seemed like it was kind of leveling off. But does it seem to you folks that it's on the rise again? Well, it, it's it's a large concern, and whether there's more out there or we've been able to target our enforcement a little better. Um, I'm not sure of the answer to that, but it's definitely a priority for us. And we were able to do that increase uh, at the same time that we lost our mini alcohol prevention grants. Those had allowed us to go out and just target drunk drivers and it was paid for by the state. We don't have those anymore right now, uh, but this is such a priority. Uh, you know, the bulk of it happens late evening to early morning. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep doing what we can to make the roads safe. Well, I'd like to commend you and, and all the officers. Really, you guys do a ones great job. Doing, so. Great job for Thank you. Thank you. That includes my report, Mr. Manager. Uh, yes, I have one announcement. We have a new city engineer, Dave Graf. Would you like to stand up, Dave? He has several years of municipal experience, and we'd like to welcome him to Wooddale. Is there anything you want to say, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things you're going to have to learn real quick is when you speak, you have to go to the microphone. But that's very good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> is, that brings us to the consent agenda. Is there any objections uh, to any of the items on the consent agenda? I uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now may I have a motion to approve the items on the agenda being... Uh, fuel system improvements, contract awards, street light installation, Montrose Avenue, and an ordinance authorizing the sale of personal property owned by the city of Wooddale. Is there such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Knipe? Yes. Alderman Pysak? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Wesley? Yes. Alderman Talamay? Yes. Those items are approved. Item 3 is approved as Ordinance 0-06-63. Uh, it brings us to the committee chairman reports, finance and administration, Alderman Winger. No report. Uh, Public Health, Safety, and Judiciary, Alderman Pizak. No report, Mayor. Building, Zoning, and Planning, Zoning, and Building, excuse me, Alderman Knight. First item and only item is the text amendment proposed fee increases the Chapter 10 Zoning Code. I make a motion to approve the committee of the whole recommendation and direct the city attorney to draft an amendment, A, 
to delete any language referring or related to a court reporter from Chapter 10 of the Zoning Code, and B, to draft a separate fee appendix, removing them from Chapters 10 and 11 of the Zoning Code for one, a standard variance application fee being $5,500, five, I mean, excuse me, $555, two, a special hearing application fee being $655, Three, a subdivision application fee being $500 per lot. Four, a lot consolidation fee being $500 per lot. And five, a planned unit development fee being $3,000 plus $200 per unit, condominiums and or townhouses. Is there a second? Second. On the question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That ends my report, man. Public Works, Alderman uh, Winger. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to uh, it, to approve the 2006 roadway program to approve payment to R.W. Dunteman Company in the amount of $304,224.34. Is there a second? Second. On the question, roll call. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Knight? No. Alderman Pizek? No. Alderman Shockey? No. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Wesley? Yes. Alderman Tallamy? Yes. It's 4 3. 4 3. That passes. I'd like to make another motion uh, for the Woods Lift Station Rehabilitation Pay Estimate Number 1 to approve payment to Mosiel and Associates Incorporated in the amount of $116,685. Is there a second? Second. On the question? Roll call. Alderman Coles? No. Alderman Knipe? Yes. Alderman Pizek? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Wesley? Yes. Alderman Tallamy? Yes. That passes. I'd like to make a third motion uh, to award a contract to Sweeney Contractors as the lowest responsible bidder in a not to exceed amount of $21,800 to complete the two reference triangles in the RFP that was sent out for our. Uh, for our garden triangles. Is there a second? Second. On the question? Question. Alderman Wesley. Um, if, if this does fail, which I probably know it's going to fail, what is the direction that the council would like us to proceed in this project, knowing that the council asked us to go out for bids before and, and our, our staff put the time and effort to send them out because you guys said that you didn't have enough bids out there and we sent it out. So now I'm asking as a city council here, where are we, did you want to just forget those triangles? What is, what does the council want us to do? Because obviously we did what you guys want to do and now you guys don't want to do them. So I, I would like some direction which way to go. Uh, let the record reflect that uh, 755, Alderman Subak has joined us. If this is the triangle, I'm going to recuse myself? Uh, yes, we are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alderman Ptolemy. Yeah, I, I would support, I, I guess I would support this as long as, at this point, we, we don't do anything with this until next spring. I mean, that would be my recommendation is that we don't do anything with this till next spring. When we originally granted the one uh, corner, I had made the comment then at that time that I felt it was too late in the season to uh, already to be putting in a new garden and, you know, went ahead and did it and we've paid the price very heavily for what has transpired over there. And I'm not opposed to doing this, but I, I really believe that it needs to be done at the appropriate time and the appropriate time is early spring. So I would support going forward with this uh, as long as it is done in the spring. That would be the only stipulation I would have. We'd appreciate any other comments Streetscape could get. Uh, I take it there's no objection to the general design of the project or going forward with landscaping the triangles. Just want the re reworked. Alderman Wesley. Will the council, since down the line we, we probably will go this route, will the council agree that we work on putting the sprinkler system, uh, the 
sprinkler system in now or wait until spring for that too? <laughs> Alderman Ptolemy. Yeah, I, I would, re what I would recommend is this. I, I feel that we've had an issue with, with putting in the original sprinkler system on the, on the first property. And what I would rather see us do is, at this point is maybe hire a contractor to come in and finish that because of the workload that's already on our building department, or not our building, but on our public works department. Um, you know, I, I would say we should go ahead and that would be the first thing that has to be done, you know, and, and I wouldn't be opposed instead of using that money that we had allocated to pay this for this year in this budget, that we use that money instead to hire the contractor to put in the source or the water systems um, and get that taken care of with those funds. And then we budget additional monies next year out of tourism where this money came from for finishing off the project. That, again, that would be a recommendation. Uh, Mr. Holm, do you have an opinion on this? Uh, I guess my concern would be if you put the pipes in this year and then you forget where they are next year when you start planning. Uh, is this something should be done simultaneous or what is, is this something you want to continue to do in-house or go outside? What's your recommendation? My only concern and, and, and if we had a plan that was set in concrete and we knew that that was the plan and that plan wasn't going to alter, then you could put an irrigation system in and you won't be digging twice. But on the first triangle, we found out that we went out in the field and we had to move things around a little bit and the walkway ended up shifting a little bit. and. and we would have ended up having sprinklers underneath the walkway, which which wouldn't have been you know wouldn't have been a good thing. So we would have been out there digging a second time to move those sprinklers. So um, I would recommend, and, and it does mean disruption after the plants are put in, which isn't the best thing, but it's still the safest route. Put the plants in, follow up immediately with the sprinkling system. If you do the plants in early spring, and we're talking you know March, April, spring and you do a sprinkling system in March, April, then you should be fine because you'll get it in before the June, July, August heat. Uh, Alderman Coles? Yeah, I, that's the best thing to do because you don't know what plants are going to go where. Some take sprinklers, some take trickle, and on the heads in it. So that would be the best thing to do is get the plants in first and then put in the sprinkler system. That's the best way to do it. Alderman Ptolemy? Yeah, I'd just like to follow up, though, Gary. I mean, we're, I think what I'm trying to do is take some of the burden off of you and your department, though. And we still have a situation, and I don't believe it's been put in yet, correct? No, well, and we intentionally pushed it off. when we, when we Once we got through the, the, the heat, we, we, we shifted our focus onto, onto other projects, such as finishing up the, the storm sewer project that we were working on. Right. So we, we've, we've I, I've intentionally knowing that we did have other projects pending out there and I didn't want to leave those, those open. I, I intentionally pushed off the well, irrigation system. But, but my point is, is that we, you know, potentially we could use the funds we have now to hire somebody to do it so that it takes some of the additional burden off of you and your staff. Yeah, we have all if, the parts. If you're in agreement with that. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise, are you guys going to do it? I mean, the bottom line is, are you guys going to do it or not? You know, and if you don't, I mean, if you if if you're open to letting somebody come in, then you got to tell us so that we can go ahead and we'll just, you know, we'll do it. I mean, we'll ask you to set it up, but we'll we'll get it done. We have all the parts and materials for the first triangle. I mean, those are already all purchased. We we okay. have them all. So and and that's not on any time crunch, which is again why it kind of got pushed back. Now that we're now that we're past August heat. Whether we finish it in the early part of October or early part of November at this point really, really is right. critical. And with all the rain we've it's had. the next year's triangles that I would ask maybe um, time to, for me to, to talk with my field people and, and make, say, you know, long-term planning March, April again. Are we going to have the bodies to do it or do we need to go out? And let me, if you give me a little time to work on that, okay. I certainly can do that on, on my end. Any other comments? You have the direction you need? Yes. Very good. Uh, anything further on the question? Roll call. Alderman Coles? Uh, yes. Alderman Knight? No. Alderman Pizek? No. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Wesley? Yes. Alderman Ptolemy? Yes. 
That was a motion to award the triangle landscape contract, and that was approved. Next spring. Next spring. Next spring. Was that the motion? Right, it was part of the motion, right, for next right. spring? Yes. Very good. Because if it's for now, I take my vote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was for next spring. <laughs> All right, that brings us to other business. Alderman Subak. May I have a motion to approve an ordinance granting a north uh, side yard variance to allow construction of a second floor addition, properly commonly known as 121 South Cedar. Is there such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. On the question. Question. Alderman Shockey. Yes, I'm just wondering now, is a variance needed at this point? Is that directed to Mr. Nowak or Mr. Bond or? <laughs> Whoever should be answering it, I would imagine Mr. Nowak. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nowak. All right. Mr. Breen. If I might, uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Alderman. For the record, my name is Thomas Breen, and as you know, I've appeared before you on behalf of my clients, Mr. and Mrs. Nova, who are the owners of the property in question. As I've indicated, uh, to Roger and other members of the staff. Uh, my clients have lived outside of the home since January. Um, they did not want to go through another winter uh, without beginning construction. I know they pulled their permit based on the 75% rule as late as two weeks ago. It was their intent to, to proceed with the variation if they got it. I'd ask you this evening that uh, if you would to pass the ordinance to allow them the choice. I, again, I know that they have substantially gone forward, but it, they had no choice. They have lived in secondary housing since January. As you know, uh, last month uh, the matter was not on the agenda by air. Uh, they just were very frustrated and felt that they had to proceed, uh, but I'd ask you to allow it to be their choice. Thank you very much. Alderman Coles. So what, is, what was the answer now? Do we need a variance or not? I believe the petitioner is requesting that we proceed with the uh, variance. Yes. If we need a variance, why is it being, the second floor is already being built? That's what I want to know. Mr. Noy. You are correct in so far as the construction has started, but I believe, as Mr. Breen had mentioned, uh, they would like to proceed forth uh, with the uh, the vote uh, with regard to the variance, so that they have an option of doing it either way. Uh, I couldn't answer you why. Uh, I'm not 